Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our F14B Tomcat and we're looking at using the AI Jester and his menus for beyond visual range combat and within visual range combat. So as for the scope of this video, we're just looking today at the interface between us and the Jester Rio. We're not covering the technicalities of the radar and the different type of radar locks. The reason is I've already got two videos for that. I've got a video on within visual range radar modes and locks and searches and another video on beyond visual range radar modes and locks and searches. So I'm going to assume that you've already watched those videos for this one to make sense. So to give you an idea of what we've got, here's us and we've got a bunch of baddie guys coming towards us. I uh, could have put some friendlies in there but I haven't but I'll explain the uh, friendly IFF as we go. The Rio has a lot of duties when scanning those targets and locking them and most of them are going to be done by AI Jester automatically but we can on top of that command him to do certain manual things. Okay so we're going to get our plane set up for combat, uh, master arm on, air to air mode on, HSD to TID, all the usual stuff. Let's get our missiles selected, we're going to select our Phoenixes. We have a we have a bandit guerrilla group bearing two four five eighty miles and a bandit bra two six five thirty miles forty six thousand correction and a bandit guerrilla group bearing two seven zero fifty three miles. That's very good. Uh, right, so I've selected the Phoenix missile and that's telling him my intentions are to fire on probably on multiple targets at long range. We're usually going to want to uh, use a Phoenix in track while scam. I mean, that's not particularly true, but there's a good chance we're going to want to use it in track while scam. And so he's automatically detected that, and he's gone ahead and lo automatically locked track, in track while scan. And we can see which guys are locked up because they flash. I can't see it when it's paused. Um, uh, more importantly, they are numbered in the TWS priority. So we've got TWS target 1 there, TWS target 2 there, 3 there, and 4 there. And so these guys are already locked up in track while scan, and we're good to fire at them. Now, before we go and fire at them, let's uh, command him to do something else. So, for some reason, I don't want to fire at all those guys. I only want to fire at, far at target 2 there. So, let's go back to our screen. And we've got STT lock. And so, I want to get an STT pulse doppler lock on one of those TWS targets. So, I'm going to go down to this guy here, target number. And then I can choose the target. You can see target two at the top right there. Roger. Give him a second. Locking target 49 miles. And we've got it. So that there is now a Pulse Doppler STT lock on this guy here, number two. I can now employ a weapon just against him if I wanted. Or if I wanted to choose a uh, different uh, TWS target for an STT, I could go in there again. I forgot to say that uh, because I've got an STT lock on something, to go back I'd have to break that lock first of all. So options are when I go back into the BVR menu are PSTT or break lock. Forget these ones, these are just bugged at the moment, they shouldn't be there. So breaking the lock is obviously breaking the lock. PTT is something that we'd want to do if we were close to the target. We would transfer from a Pulse Doppler STT to a Pulse uh, STT. And that is something for when we get in a uh, ACM range. So that's not what we want. We want target uh, break. Uh, sorry, break lock. Yeah, okay. Broken the lock. Now back to uh, the BBR screen. We've got it here. So let's uh, try a different type of STT lock. So we could try a different number target. Or we could go for the first TWS target. So that would be always going to be number one. And... I can't see which one's number one down there, can you? Uh, this one's now called number one, presumably because we've had him in a lock already. Um, well, actually, I don't want him. In fact, I'm going to go for number four there now, so let's do that. Target number four. Roger. I got a lock. Okay, that's now a PDSTT lock on this guy, and I can deploy my weapons in STT, STT mode if I like. Okay, so that's shown how we use Jester to do a basic track while scan on multiple targets. So that's essentially automatic. And then we can convert any of those to an STT. Now we're going to show gaining a PDSTT while ignoring the TWS. So not from the TWS. So if we don't have a TWS for whatever reason, and I believe if it's not in Phoenix mode, then we won't have a TWS. So why don't we actually change the weapon? So I'm pause there. Back to Sparrow. And you can see we no longer have the TWS. You can see only the guy out the front. Target, 45 miles. 
is flashing now. And my bad, I forgot to break the lock. So let's go back in there. Break the lock. Copy. So resuming our search. Uh, out of interest, is uh, yeah, is changing the range at the moment. Okay, we're on. Okay, so we've no longer got any flashing or marked targets. We're no longer in TWS mode, and that was done automatically again, depending on our weapon selection, because there is no point in getting a TWS lock while we've got the sparrows. Right, so let's carry on our list. So, what we can do with the sparrows is go to SCT lock. We can't use that and that anymore because we don't have TWS targets highlighted. So what we're going to have to do is use the target ahead, enemy target ahead, or friendly target ahead, or a specific target ahead. So if we choose target ahead, then it's going to go for the nearest radar return that's ahead of us, whether it's friendly, whether it's uh, hostile, whatever. If and get it in a PD STT. Next, uh, we've got enemy target ahead, so it'll go for the nearest enemy target ahead to a PD STT. Next, we will go to the friendly target ahead, and you guessed it, it's going to lock PDSTT the uh, IFF friendly target in front of us. And next, choose specific target. So if I don't want to choose the closest of a certain type of guy, I can use choose specific target. So let's try that. You can see where we've got all of the contacts ahead of us, uh, friendly and foe, listed in order of uh, distance to us so we've got this guy is the closest guy is 13 miles he is 20 degrees to our right that is that guy there in terms of azimuth that is uh, the next guy 37 miles the next guy 37 miles 40 miles 46 miles 48 miles 50 miles and some more targets 8 to 12 there so if i want to pick out one uh, i say i want to pick out that one there on the right that's about 40 ish miles uh, well that's gonna be uh this guy here 18 degrees right at 37 miles so i can pdstt him Roger. He's going to try and acquire that lock. And that's got him locked. So you can see he's off to the right now. And it is this highlighted guy here. So that's how we achieve a single PD STT without TWS. Next, let's look at some more modes. So we're going to resume to search. Target, 35 miles. We're going to break the lock. Roger that. We're now going to... So that's uh, the STT lock covered. Next, we're going to look at the scan elevation and azimuth so with our radar we can like i said point the antenna up down left or right there is a default mode which is auto mode in which case jester will control that or if we know for sure that for instance there's some guy off to our right and up high you know a long way away this is bvr so 20 30 40 miles away then we can command that antenna up there or command jester to do that so if we went to the scan elevation then we can ask him to either leave it in auto elevation and azimuth or we could have the radar scanning low or low middle or middle high middle or high the actual degrees that is going up doesn't show here but it will show in the radar if you remember we've got our elevation shown there and our plumb line scan to distances there high there and high and low there and if you have no joy finding the target then don't forget to put auto elevation and azimuth back on afterwards otherwise that radar is going to be stuck up there and be completely useless and it's going to be pretty much the same thing with the azimuth um auto elevation azimuth again do you want to scan center center left center uh, sorry right left center right and right because we can slew that radar. Now, note that the uh, human jester will have more control of this. Not only can he slew the radar left and right, but he can also make the width of the scan wider or smaller. As far as I know, in AI jester, we don't have this option. So all you can do is keep out the standard scan width that jester chooses, uh, and we can just control the slew left or right again. As soon as we've finished looking for something, with, if we can't find it, then auto elevation and azimuth. Uh, back to back to um, auto. Okay, let's see what else we've got in there. Three ship. Okay, we've got the scan distance. So, do we want it automatic? Uh, this is where the scan. Well, uh, got to be careful what we say here. Uh, the scan distance isn't actually really the scan distance. It's more really what the displays show. Um, so, do we want the display to show automatically zoomed in and out by Jester, depending on what targets we've got ahead? Or, for some reason, we might want to look a lot further out, and then we could command an override jester. Um, so we could change, uh, choose a viewable distance of 25 miles, so that's essentially from us, where we are there, to the top of the screen. 50 miles, 100 miles, 200 miles, 400 miles. Again, it will stay locked in that mode until you give jester control again, in which case you want to put 
uh, back to auto cont- uh, radar there. In fact, a good example is if I've got a, a guy 200 miles away that, that, that I can see, Jester will zoom that radar right out to 200 miles in some cases. And that means if there's someone close to me, I can barely see them because they're so small on the screen. So I can command a 25 nautical mile view at that point and then um, he'll ignore the guys 200 miles away and just look at the close guys in more detail. So that's an example of where we'd want to use that. Okay, so that's that. Next thing I think I'll show is rippling a bunch of phoenixes off in trap while scan mode. And then we'll move into close quarters within visual range mode and see what options we get there. Sun pause. Select our phoenix. Again, this is not a weapons video. So One o'clock. Not going to go through it in any detail. We've got guys selected, all ready to go. So I'm going to start giving them hell. One o'clock roll. So one away, 74 seconds, two, so two away, away, 98 seconds, missile three away, 111 seconds, four o'clock low, uh, the last missile away, 68 seconds, and off it goes, as far as I'm aware, four shut up. As far as I'm aware, we can't get Jester to change the order of these guys, or there's no obvious way to manipulate it from the Jester AI. Obviously, you do get controlled as the human uh, Rio, but that's just how it is, so... Oh. We'll finish off those missiles. I'm getting nailed. Nine o'clock. Let's drive time forward a bit to get those impacts. Okay, I missed one of the splashes there, but we got four hits. Right, next we're gonna go in close, so we're gonna choose our sparrows. We're gonna ask Mr. Jesterman to lock this guy in front of us. It's getting this, uh, Land it. 12 o'clock, it's gonna nine miles. Get a PDS to God, that guy's annoying. Uh, clicked on something wrong by accident. Pickle tanks. So I want an STT lock. I want the uh, target ahead. Copy that. He's locked. Okay, let's go a little closer. Twelve o'clock. Right, you know what? I've got to get turn that guy's voice off. I can't stand that anymore. That's much more sensible. Okay, we're closing now. We're within about six miles. So let's have a look at our options that we've got available. So the first thing to note is because we're within visual range of the target, it automatically comes up to our within visual range mode. Uh, sorry, menu. So within this within visual range menu, we've got the options of spotting. So that's visually spotting with his eyes. And we've currently got a pulse Doppler STT. What is given the option us to do is to convert that to a pulse STT. We've been through that already in other videos, but obviously it's more suitable for a close range contact. So we can do that. We can break the lock again, or we can jettison our drop tanks, which is something we would want to do obviously at this distance. And let's have a quick look what we've got in the BVR just out of interest. Okay, we've just got again to change to a pulse SDT and a brake lock and these other three are bugged they shouldn't be there now the interesting thing about this is that there are actually four acm uh, radar modes three of them can, can be controlled by pilot two of them can be controlled by the rear but none of those are here so let's just get a little closer in fact let's unlock the target now just to see if um those become available so i'm going to command a plm so i've unlocked the target let me get closer i'm going to try and get adjusted uh, to see that guy just going to pause there. Mm, yeah, I think he's staring right at him. Let's now see what options we get. Within visual range, we get to jets in the drop tanks and a couple of blank options which are probably bugged. No, so uh, it seems from that, I'll just quickly double check in BVR. I don't think we'll have any useful stuff. You no, know, so what I can see, the uh, Rio ACM modes cannot be commanded through the Jester interface. That is the MRL, the manual rapid lock, and the VSL R high, the vertical scan lock high, and the vertical scan lock low don't appear to be accessible from this menu. So that's something to bear in mind. However, it doesn't really matter. Um, everything you're going to need is going to be usable from the pilot. VSL is usable from the pilot. PAL is usable from the pilot. PLM is usable from the pilot's position. So it's no big problem. Right, I think that's as far as we can go. We've been through the BVR menus. We've been through what little there is on the within visual range menu. These things may change. It's early access at the moment. These things may change later on. We'll just have to go and see. My apologies for it being a bit of a scrappy video. It's a hard thing to do, you know, combat and trying to talk about this weird menu at the same time. Um, other than that, I have the help. See you later.